Hello, Aquarius. Welcome to your month in review for April. What's up? What's going on? Show me Aquarius, please, in April. What's going on, please, for Aquarius in April? Like always, take a resonates, leave it does not. These are, after all, general collective readings, not one-to-one -one private, which is to say they may not resonate. Frustrating, but normal. Check out the placements. You will find yourself in there somewhere. Show me Aquarius, please. What's going on, please, for Aquarius in April? All right, entering the month, Five of Cups, some sadness here, Page of Cups, and Seven of Wands is showing me a guarded heart space. Okay, we'll get to that. Two of Cups, the Knights of Pentacles, Temperance, and nevertheless, I see you moving in a position, guarded or no, past history or no, that you are moving in a certain pace that says, I'm going to keep myself open to this, assuming that there's healing on board. I agree. Okay, the Fool, the Empress, the Two of Wands, yeah, you're making good decisions for yourself that accumulate to you feeling a lot freer and, um, frankly, a lot more comfortable with your own sense of empowerment. So whatever it is that you're choosing, I just know it's correct for you. It opens your spirit up more and more to the positive every day. So that's what empowerment is. I'm making the best possible decisions for me because they feel right to me, okay? While keeping in mind the energy that's required for the situation, okay? It's looking good. So you're showing me some advanced recovery here and a strong state of self, keeping yourself open for the right reasons um, and knowing what the wrong reasons are and being able to differentiate between those. Okay. So you opened up with some sadness and some defensiveness, some caution, but nevertheless, a steadiness to move forward in a particular direction with the understanding that there's healing that's visible and obvious and apparent. Otherwise, what's the point, right? It's looking like it's a good choice for you. You got some good stuff in here today. All right. You immediately kick off the month, though, with being in a position of defensiveness and uncertainty about whether or not you should guard your heart against something or someone yeah, because of the past, past disappointment specifically. Let's see that Five of Cups, <clears throat> which brings to mind. I may not clarify all of these. Some of them will speak for themselves, but uh, we'll know as we go along. All right, let's see that Five of Cups, please. Show me that Five of Cups. Show me that Five of Cups, please, for Aquarius. Goodness, the lawn maintenance, I think it picked up around Pisces, and it's just been ongoing ever since. Oh, boy. All right. Eight of Pentacles, Eight of Wands, the Ten of Cups. Okay, okay. So that would explain the opening to that month. Right there on that border between late March and early April, you got some communication that kicked through, all right? <laughs> and um, <clears throat> I apologize. That's just where we are right now with the throat clearing and all that. I have no control over it. It's irritating, I know. And uh, some communication cut through rapidly, but it was constructive, okay? It was constructive communication, either being generated by you, but I'm seeing you as being on the receiving end of it. And it immediately hit you with notes of, Emotions of sadness from the past. Otherwise, I don't think you'd be there at all. Something prompted that reaction to put you on the defensive or got you thinking about old feelings, particularly sad old feelings. But what came through was a constructive opportunity to work through it. And it, it, hit, it hit fast. It hasn't come through yet, but when it does, it'll be obvious. <laughs> you won't be able to miss it, I'll tell you that. Eight of Wands, Eight of Pentacles, the Ten of Cups. Um, it's kind of like saying, you know, what was made wrong will be made right. That's more or less the rough translation here. Do keep in mind, when we subtract that five from this ten, we're still left with a remainder of five. So here now it looks like we have the constructive, I'm going to use that keyword here, constructive communication and realistic opportunity to work through something to possibly achieve emotional balance with someone whom we got divided with. Ten of Cups, guys, as you can see, it's all-encompassing. It's like the version or the emotional equivalent of the Ten of Pentacles. There's lots of folks in there, stakeholders, as I would call them. 
about your heart space and who's meant to be there in your life to support you, family, friends, very close friends, a uh, special certain someone, spouses, kids, you name it, okay? I'm not saying it's happy all the time. What I'm saying is, is that there's supposed to be relatively a healthy function in here. So then the constructive communication then is, can we get to this space? I understand this is where we last left it, the Five of Cups. Do you think we can get it here? And that is very active, to the point, constructive. I keep using that word because <laughs> whoever's delivering that communication is hitting some key points about functionality. This is what can be done. This is what we can't do. This is what I can do. This is what maybe we can do, you know? How do we fix this? Because that's a real serious invitation to fix something within your circle, with somebody, somewhere, perhaps multiple somebodies or at least one person. And you're like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> you're, a little, you're a little guarded. I don't fault you for that. You know, I'm going to jump over that seven of wands. And if I need further clarification, we'll circle back to that page of cups. But that would just be a very cautious heart that you're not sure that you should just all together reject, block, or draw firm boundaries with. Okay, hence caution. So let's just start right there with that seven of wands and see the reaction here. I mean, I kind of got the idea right here, but I want to know or better understand your reaction there. It's not enough to say I'm sad. A lot of people are saying I'm upset or sad. They typically want to work through it. You're showing me hesitation. You don't know if you can get involved in that. So I want to see what the reasons are here. But to each their own, that may or may not resonate with you at all. Do keep that in mind. Let's see that seven of wands, and that seven of wands, and that seven of wands. I have to say, that looks like on point, here's what we can do, here's how we can fix it, communication. I can't say it's not. Getting this back into healthy function where you feel included and... Uh, that your emotions are being taken into consideration, that kind of thing. Okay, there's that page of again. There it is, twice. The lovers. Oh, 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 that's why we pulled it back by a thousand degrees. My, my, my. No, I don't need to clarify that page of cups because it's already here. You're making it very clear to me today, Christina. This is what's up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, page of cups. Should I block this? Or should I try to approach this with some measure of heart, but with healthy boundaries? That's up to you. I can't make that decision for you. Tarot does not dictate action. You do. I am saying but one of many choices. Tarot is the proof of choice, not the absence of choice. You get to choose. You remember that. Okay? It looks, I have to say, I'm going back to that constructive communication that has real-world application attached to it that suggests feasible, workable for everybody, or at least one other special person. Okay, you are showing me a big old heart space. And what you're trying to present to this situation is a hypothetical page of cups. So you a big feeler. You might have some very prominent water in your chart. We also have Gemini here. Not the point. You're a big feeler. Okay. And just like because of that, you're trying to figure out approach or if you should bother at all. Should you block the shot? Or should you be open to receiving the shot, but with a lot of boundaries? That's your choice. I can see why you're showing me hesitation and caution, because at your most heart of hearts, this actually means a lot to you. It's a strong connection to you, bare minimum, whatever context it takes in terms of the lovers. Take the word lovers out of the lovers. It's a very strong soul contract that kind of defies the odds. And it's that much more... Ah, ah. But it can be that much more rewarding uh, if it's chosen. So somebody is offering full cooperation to work for this. And you're like, what, what do I do? That's up to you. And I can see why, though. You got a big old heart there for this person. Whether you like it or not. <laughs> it's kind of like that. That's your reaction. Is like, I know. <laughs> why do you think I keep it hidden? I know. To say you have a kind of a giant soft spot for this person or situation is, 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 is an understatement, you know? But uh, 
Two of Cups, Knight of Pentacles, Temperance says, suggest, so long as you see results about the fairness of an emotional union, you will continue to plot along in that particular direction. You'll just do so slowly, okay? And I think that's a reasonable reaction if that's the choice you make. I don't have the backstory. I'm not looking at the past, guys. I don't care about what caused the chasm in the first place. I'm jumping you into April, okay? That's it. If the context surrounding this is very bad, you have your answer. Don't engage with it. I'm talking to someone who is offering constructive work, communication, and activities around this connection. I didn't see any badness attached to it. Okay? So you would know best, is my point. If it's not worth, if it's not worth it, then it's not worth it. That's it. Don't worry about it. You already have your answer. Okay, take your deep feeling for this aside and ask yourself, can you reasonably supply the same effort that's being requested? You have your answer. Would it be good for you? Would it be healthy for you and this person's connection? That's it. Okay, let's jump on over that two of cups. Show me that two of cups, show me that two of cups. Who knows, honey? It might even be a pitch-in effort. I'm trying to figure... What I am curious about is the way that that arrives. It's almost like coming in as ideas. Is an offer for help at work? Here's some ideas for work? Or this is how you... And that's the context for connecting or, uh, with you. See what I'm saying? To get the healing process going. Because it looks so terribly constructive. But at the same time, it offers the possibility to actually work through it. Hmm. Let's see that two of cups. Let's see that two of cups, please. Some of that two of cups. Five of wands, the ace of wands, and the tower. Okay. 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 There has been kind of... Uh, I'm not going to say ultimatum. That's not correct. There has been some sort of shift by one or both people that says this has nothing to do about passion or old arguments. Tower is sweeping that away. Bye-bye. Ace of Wands, Five of Wands. Tower is sweeping that away. This was either realized by one or both people. Two cups here. It's not about the passion. It's not. And it's not about old angers and frustrations. Nope. It's about the union between you and I. Okay. We extract ourselves from the Ten of Cups. We extract ourselves from the lovers. And what's left is, this is how I feel about you. This is how you feel about me. You and I, for all intents and purposes, are on the same page. Take passion out of it. Take the fight out of it. Take the arguing out of it. This is where we stand. There's a realization here, and it was a strong realization by at least one person. It's not about the passion. It never was. Perhaps that's how it initially presented itself. Okay. But that wasn't the state power. Yeah, passion has no state power. It feels good in the moment. And that's how you know the difference between passion and love, is that when you remove the passion and there's still love there, that's how you know it was real feelings. But sometimes you have to violently remove the passion and the arguing because arguing is just another version of passion, guys. It takes passion to argue. It takes passion to put up a fight. It takes passion to push and pull. It's just another version of the Ace of Wands. It's just more elaborate when people can't work their stuff out. That positive fire turns into something negative. So when you take away the positive and the negative whoosh, tower, What's left is the genuine article. Are we on the same page where it counts? The answer was yes. So while this, white, again, the lovers, oh, passion's going to get involved, you betcha, but <laughs> did it go beyond that? Sometimes it takes removing the element of passion to understand that. So at least one person here had that realization. You take the passion away, positive or negative, the fight, the push and pull, the back and forth. 
the teasing, the playfulness, the excited energy, is there love? The answer was yes, and it was probably always yes. It's just sometimes it's not until you have like a violent, I don't know if it was violent, but a radical sweeping of the energies that were getting in the way. And then you get to see what the common denominator was. That's why towers are necessary. The towers, no matter how big or how small, ultimately zero us down to that common denominator. You know, it takes us to the place that matters. And everything that we built up around it was nonsense. So you take away the, the nonsense here, and what was left was the real deal. You know this, they know this, or the both of you know this. All right. Did you know you had love for it? Yeah, otherwise you wouldn't be showing me the Queen of Cups. You had passion for it too, but you also had strong love, and why do you think you're showing me... Oh, oh. Oh, should I block this? Or should I cautiously open up towards it? Because I can't separate my heart from this person. So that kind of tells me you already knew <laughs> you had love for this situation. You may not have known it for them if passion kept getting in the way. Okay, or they may not have known it themselves. All right, let's see that Knights of Pentacles. Show me that Knights of Pentacles, show me that Knights of Pentacles, show me that Knights of Pentacles. Show me that Knights of Pentacles. Show me that Knight of Pentacles. I will say this. I like this in a way that's very honest. Very. Very honest. I respect that. It's like I'm just laying it all out on the table. I mean, what the hell? Of a way? That's a hell of a way to launch into April. I'm just going to put it all out on the table. Ooh. <laughs> Can't say it doesn't get your attention. I have to admit, that will get my attention. I'm trying to think from your point of view how I'd react to that. I'm like, oh. Well, look at that. Oh my God, did he just go over points A, B, C, and D? <laughs> it's kind of, <laughs> you see, so I'm trying to put myself in your shoes. It's like, how would I react to that? Yeah, I don't blame you. Should you block it or should you cautiously open it? Because they're giving you tangible stuff to work with. Communication first. I mean, that's, that's kind of admirable. I'm not going to lie. Um, it's like, you know what? I'm just going to lay it all on the table. That's what that is, guys. So... It's, it's no wonder your reaction then is perfectly normal. Absolutely. It just hasn't come through yet, but when it does, you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm guessing late March to early April. Yes. We got a couple of eights here. Ten. I don't know. I don't do time checks on the monthlies because the idea is it's within that month. That may not be the case for some of you. All right. Some of that Knight of Pentacles, some of that Knight of Pentacles, some of that Knight of Pentacles. Well, yours is interesting. All right. Yeah. Nine of Wands, Ten of Pentacles, just yes. Okay. Your walls are starting to come down when you engage with this. It's starting to feel a little safer, but you are still insisting upon slowness. I don't blame you. You're saying it's the right thing to do, justice, and your sense of foundation has told you that this is correct. So the foundation here not being your 3D legacy so much as you're saying this is a core concept attached to you that you learned over time, uh, was that if something feels correct, even though it's a little scary, you have enough foundational skills with you to understand if something's correct or not. And if it starts to feel incorrect, you'll block it. However, if it's still, you're progressing and you're progressing and it does feel correct, then you will continue to proceed. So you're going to use your sense of justice to navigate you through this, okay? And then also, yes, of course, you also have realistic concerns attached to you. Um, foundations are not easy to run when they are in the 3D. So this is the tree of life. You're saying you have more than one thing to think about. You have more than one thing that occupies your energy. So I'm seeing how you apply your methodology of stability, uh, contracts and commitments that are important to you. Um, what gets your time, energy, and effort, and that's it. And that includes this as well. So while it's important to you, you're saying it's also not the main show. So you still have a strong sense of priority, okay? Trust yourself. That's all there is. You're moving along and it doesn't feel right? You got it. It's done. If you're moving along and it feels correct, okay, cool. Continue to balance with yourself in that way. You'll know how to block it if you need to block, okay? That's it. That's all any of this can do. I just like that you have a method to this that feels good or correct to you, okay? Let's see that temperance, please. Show me temperance. 
Show me temperance. Show me temperance. Oh. Show me temperance. Okay, but I'm only at 20 minutes. Here's hit had such a gunpowder reaction behind it. <laughs> oh, no. oh. <laughs> I didn't feel like 20 minutes at all. Wow. Let's see that temperance, please. Show me that temperance. Show me that temperance. Nine of Cups, Six of Pentacles, Two of Cups. There it is, baby. There it is. There it is. There it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. When you take passion off the table and when two people realize it was never really about the passion, perhaps the passion was the, the cover jacket to that particular book. In other words, don't judge a book by its cover. Classic advice, right? Ironically, that's how book covers are designed. That way you will judge them immediately. But you know what I mean. Right? The original concept of don't judge a book by its cover. So you take away the passion. What remains is the actual content of the written work. And the written work here between you and this person is actually quite beautiful. Uh, it's lovely. And as you are continuing on in that state of, I'm not going to rush this. As soon as it feels weird or wrong, I'm out of here. I'm going to block it. <laughs> but I don't see any evidence that you have seen that is putting you off. Mind you, you still have priorities around you that has nothing to do with this. You keep that at the focus of who you are. Those foundations don't come cheap, honey. And they take a lot to run them. Um, but in the overall sense, not only is the love between you two a lot more balanced because now two people are recognizing it instead of just getting caught up by the cover jacket, um, you yourself are experiencing high levels of personal satisfaction because it fits you. Whatever this is fits you. It feels correct. And uh, as you do so, it's almost like you're surprised to find how much you yourself are personally healing towards this. You feel a lot better, right? It's lovely. So, uh, that was some powerful, here it is, communication. <laughs> yeah, don't blame your reaction at all. Maybe you thought it was hot air. Maybe you've had those kind of things with your person before where you tried to restart things. or But it was always coming from a place of passion that turned into a combative state in Five of Wands. So those two were always knocking each other out. That sense of freshness and keeping the hope alive versus the frustrations of reality covered up the love that was there the whole freaking time, I'm guessing. That must have been a really beautiful <laughs> cover jacket to that book. <laughs> But no, this this was this was the heart of the matter. You know, balancing as far as I can tell this union, you are personally satisfied kind of cups with what you're experiencing, but you're satisfied by what you're seeing and the results are equal. It's fair. It's felt on both sides. We have a practical alliance and balance here. You both seem to have a mutual respect for the 3D and sense of stability and contract fulfillment. You both share that. But now you both seem to realize that you're on the same page, and perhaps you always were, but other shit got in the way, you know? And it feels correct, because it is. Very good. Very good. Very good. Excellent. 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 Very good. I don't think Aquarius is your son. It could be. Don't get me wrong. It feels like maybe Aquarius Moon. Aquarius Pluto and one of your nodes oh that's better <clears throat> all right okay the fool let's do it yeah you look like you have a breath of fresh air attached to you it's absolutely beautiful I wish everybody could feel that the fool the empress oh oh that's not lovely Almost like you're shaking your hair out. <laughs> but kind of like the spiritual version of that, yeah. And you're feeling your intuition, of course. I should hope so. All right. Let's see that fool, please. Show me the fool. Show me the fool. Show me that fool, please. Ten of Cups. There it is. The world. The hanged man. 
Interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting. Well, I don't care what your query's placement is. You're showing me the complexity of your thinking. Um, this is, is that Ten of Cups? You know. Wondering if we can repair that. You're saying I'm staying open towards it. But you have very strong ideas about how you will completely re-enter into that uh, cycle. The world is here with the hanged man. The idea is if it can't achieve that state, I will scrap it. But you're also saying you are modifying with the hanged man your idea of what the Ten of Cups is in this. And your role in it. You're saying it can't go back to the way it was. You don't want to open old doors. And you don't want to default to old patterns. Oh, cool. I respect that. But you're also saying your notion of the Ten of Cups and what emotional harmony and balance is, is changing a little bit. And that's what you, you're showing me conditions, in other words, around your world. You're saying, this is conditionally what I will open up towards. Or it's them. Somebody here is showing me shift in how they perceive emotional balance and emotional harmony. Understanding they were on the same page with you and you with them, that was one thing. Now someone's saying the greater circle of life here about what constitutes emotional support and their connectivity to it and how they affect others. It's not just about how you affect me. You need to be a human being that's walking around wondering actively, how are you affecting others? And is it good or is it bad? A lot of people concern themselves with, how is this affecting me? We're not always aware of how we're affecting others. So somebody here has had a shift in view about that. What constitutes emotional harmony, circuitry? How do I play in it? How am I allowing someone to perceive me in their support of them, and so on and so forth? What does that mean? What does that mean to have an inner circle? So, I like that someone here, I'm defaulting to you, but it could be them. As we've had to have, somebody here had to have. A shift in emotional perception. It's not just about how you make me feel, it's about how I make you feel too. Yeah. And on those conditions, depending on those conditions, that's what we open up to. But we don't want to renew old cycles, and we don't want to close this off if it feels correct. The idea to keep it going, then, is that we need to have a change in perspective. I agree. Okay? All right. The Empress. Show me that Empress, please. Show me the Empress. Show me that Empress, please. Show me the Empress. You know, that's the ideal of Two of Cups, guys. It's not just understanding you love each other, but there's a sense of mutual respect there. I care about how I affect you. When you take passion aside, that bullshit kind of goes away. Real love says, I care how I affect you. And perhaps I didn't see that before. Perhaps I didn't see myself in a larger picture. Perhaps I didn't know how to. See, something like that. Let's see that, uh, the Empress here. Show me that Empress, show me the Empress, show me the Empress, show me the Empress. Show me that Empress, please. I'm assuming that's you, but they did open with the Ten of Cups coming towards you in that proposition. I think it's a little bit of the both of you, to be honest. Okay. Oh, Lord. Now my other neighbor's kicking off. Oh, my goodness. Today's the day for long care, ladies and gentlemen. Five of Cups. Three of Cups. Remember that Five of Cups you opened with? Three of Cups. Reconnecting with this Knight of Swords. Uh, at this time in April, further down in April, you are making the conscious decision to connect with this. Okay, in a way that feels good to you, in a pace that feels correct to you. Okay, it's really alleviating that sense of Five of Cups. As you connect with it and you two kind of reestablish and better get acquainted with your emotional selves towards each other, it gets easier. It gets easier. All right? You trust it a little more. You're showing me less caution. Okay? It's doing its job. All right. Show me that two of wands. That two of wands, please. Show me that two of wands. Nine of Pentacles, the Empress, 
And the hermit, yeah, you're, you're making good decisions. Trust yourself. You yourself as an individual, you look great. I think this is one of those areas in life where you can honestly say it was a setback of some type. But it seems to be resolving itself between two people who are learning to shift and relearn what constitutes emotional fulfillment on both sides. And it's lovely. And we find at the rock bottom, not the rock bottom, but the basis of the thing, what actually matters. And you're making great decisions, honey. That's all I can tell you. I want you to trust yourself. The hermit, the empress, the nine of pentacles, you're glowing. Personally, you as a person, like I said, you personally are glowing and you're quite fulfilled. I know you're quite the hard worker. You're actually very successful, but you have a modest disposition around you. I think when people see you in the 3D, they wouldn't know it. How strong will stable you are. You really prize your 3D world and everything that you have accomplished, but the hermit says you're cool with it because you worked your way into that particular level of experience and wisdom. And the two of wands on your base suggest you trust your own decision-making process, as you should. You have a softness in you that says, I care about many people, not just about myself. But me being able to appreciate everything that I've done as an individual is also a point of reasonable pride for you as well. So you don't just think about yourself, you try to think about others too. Something here deeply affected you at the emotional level, and it's coming through as... This is actually pretty damned workable. It wasn't before, but that was then. This is now. Kind of like that. Uh, so I love this. Make the decisions that are correct for you, and you will always do right by you. Trust yourself. I know, in many respects, you are a successful 3D person. Everything from the garden you have cultivated, to the home that you occupy, to the career that you employ. And something affected you deeply as a personal and emotional level. Who knows about it, to what extent, I have no clue. That's not a point. I see you relaxing around this. Okay. As you both kind of deepen your points of view about emotional connectivity and how you connect and relate to each other. This was the most critical piece by far. Right here. When we took away the passion, we understood the truth of the thing. Is passion still there? I'm sure. But if we authentically love someone, that will always be there. That can't really be taken away. But love can deepen. And it's really fair here. And you feel it, personally. Continue to maintain the principles of your everyday life balances, you'll be fine. I understand your immediate reaction to this. I do. It's going to be okay. Okay. All right. Let's get some oracles for you. Show me Aquarius, please. Memories, nostalgia, decisions. I know, I, I know. <laughs> Memories, nostalgia, that's like that Six of Cups energy that I'm interpreting here as the lovers today, and we have a decision surrounding this person uh, because of those reasons. They mean or they represent, I don't know how else to put this, they represent a significant marker in your life as an emotional exception. I don't know how else to put that because you are so successful in your 3D. You may not be rich. My point is, is that you are content with you. And you can't put a price on that. You show me the Empress twice, the Hermit, your pentacles that surround you and that you're very comfortable with. Um, that doesn't just happen overnight, guys. You have a whole world that you've created, regardless of this person being there. So what can remain then between you and this person is emotional connectivity. If the 3D contribution was never theirs and the passion's gone, what remains then is the common denominator and that was real love so i can see then your initial hesitation because if we haven't learned this if there's still a lack of insight surrounding this then we'll just re-enter that arena over and over again which is what you were thinking over here i will continue to open up towards this so long as i can see that our ideas of emotional connectivity have changed and we can find a place in each other's world 
So it all starts back here with immediately being prompted with that nostalgia that is the Five of Cups, okay? Emotional sadness of the past and the decision surrounding about whether or not to engage in it. Okay, I got you. Oh, and the hidden emotions, what, what, like I said, this was the critical piece right here. You did away with the cover jacket, and I'll grant you it was a sexy cover jacket, but it was the material or the weight to the book that was there the whole time. Okay, it was there the whole time, okay? <laughs> yeah, we had that push and pull energy. I know <laughs> that push and pull energy was real. I know. I know. And the chase. For some of you, always felt like you were in the position of chasing this person. They indicated that they wanted yes. Again, this was really critical right here. The indication of yes and no. That's really. Oh lord, I've already lost the darn thing. That's that push and pull energy right there. I want this, I reject it. I want this, I reject it. Push and pull. Somebody I identified as the chaser, that means somebody was identifying as the runner. Okay? We take all that nonsense aside. Time has passed. This is the truth that remains. If you were, Think about it. If you were supplying your 3D world this whole time and they had nothing to do with it and the passion's gone, communication comes rushing in. It could only have one origin. And that was where this whole time, the real feelings, okay? All that. All that. that Third-party interference. Let's talk about that. Third-party interference. I know how that's often presented, okay, on YouTube. It doesn't always mean that. Third-party is anyone who's outside your two's bond. Anybody. Mom, Dad, Aunt Frida. Anybody who has a word to say that may or may not be helpful or hindering. You know, well-intended but poor advice, that kind of thing, that might have come into play here. I did not see that in the traditional third-party outside interference. However, if at any time you felt, let's take the, the poor advice aside from people who mean well, but there's the runner on there, god dang it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we definitely had some runner chasing dynamic right here. If at any time in this connection you were made to feel like a third party, okay, or you actively were a third party and it only went so far, like I said, it was a very sexy cover jacket, but it did not reveal the truth of the book. Okay, ending the passion revealed the truth. Okay, point is, is that you should never feel like a third party or be made to feel like a third party, whatever that is. Okay? Something's either correct or it's not. That's it. That's all there is to it. So if you two are finding an emotional balance that's brand new to the both of you and you didn't expect it to be there, given your two's history, there you go. I did see an active shift in changing perspective about what constitutes emotional connectivity. Taking passion off the table. Restructuring for the both of you, I think. Okay? All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. The Book of Wisdom. See, this, when I say these two together, it's always sudden wealth let's modify that because of the book of wisdom is here i know you're smart you built your foundation up over time so there was nothing sudden about it it took wisdom time smarts and a dedication to understanding your own pathway that means writing your own story and what it is you wanted to see for yourself so when you put these together it slows down the wealth but it's done so with a steady building of knowledge i saw that for you many times i remarked on it many times you did this on your own. Your 3D world is very much your own. And there was nothing sudden about it. It took time to build it. But you knew it because you did so at the conscious, intelligent level. That one acquires their wealth and their foundation. Also, the numbers 11 and 26 might be important to you. Uh, 
Uh, this, I, 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 well, you know, <laughs> like I said, where, where's my other cards? See, I'm getting all over the place here. Okay, like I said, it was a really sexy cover jacket. You know what I'm saying? It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> I know. And even if they weren't all that, let's say they, they wouldn't grace the cover of a GQ magazine, whoever, or whatever, female, male, whatever. You were deeply attracted to them. That's what this represents. Not so much their physical appearance, but how you interpreted your energy towards them. And according to you, ooh. <clears throat> Number 28 as well. Okay, Aquarius, honey, I hope this helped you. Put in the comments. Take care. Be well.